purpose of this video is to walk through a stoichiometry problem with a limiting reactant. This is a reaction of solid copper with aqueous silver nitrate to form aqueous copper 2 nitrate and solid silver. This is actually a really interesting reaction. I'm going to bring up a picture of what this looks like. This is a close-up of a beaker that had silver nitrate dissolved in it. You can't see, but there's a copper wire running through here. And what you see forming on that copper wire are crystals of silver. So the silver ions that are initially dissolved in the solution actually come out as a solid. And at the same time, the copper, which was solid copper in the form of a wire, ends up dissolved in the solution as aqueous copper two ions. So it's a really beautiful reaction. You can see really nice crystals of silver forming there. So what we're going to analyze in this reaction is if we just put the same mass of these two uh, reactants together. So let's say we had 50 grams of each reactant. And some of the questions we might have is which one of these is the limiting reactant? Which one is going to run out first? That's going to be an important question to answer. Another question to answer would be how much product do we end up making? How many moles and grams of copper to nitrate and silver are produced? And then a third question might be how much excess reactant is left over? If one of these limits the reaction, that means there'll be leftover reactant of the other reactant in the chemical reaction. For this example, I'm going to take 50 grams of each reactant. I'm going to go ahead and put that on a before line. So my B stands for before. So I'll go ahead and fill in 50 grams of each. And for my products, of course, none of them have formed before the reaction has started. So I'll fill in zero grams for the product. Now you might just look at this and say, oh, 50 grams is reacting with 50 grams. It's equal masses, it's just going to react completely. But of course, the mass doesn't actually tell me the quantity of uh, particles that I have reacting. In order to think about that too, before I do anything else, I do need to balance the chemical equation. Right now, it is unbalanced. So I can look over here and see that I have a unit of nitrate, that's polyatomic ion, in the products, I have two units of nitrate in this compound here, copper two nitrate. So I'm gonna go ahead and realize that I need to put a coefficient of two here because I need two units of nitrate after the reaction occurs. That also doubles the silver atom. So I will need a coefficient of two over here as well. What that tells me is when this reacts, one atom of copper actually reacts with two units of silver nitrate. So once I know the ratio in which the particles are going to react by balancing the equation, my next step would be to convert these gram amounts to moles. The mole unit is how we count chemical quantities up. Just like we could use the, a dozen to count up cookies or donuts, uh, we use moles to count up chemical quantities. So I need to do a little side calculation to figure out um, how many moles is present in 50 grams of copper and 50 grams of silver nitrate. So that is going to require going to the periodic table and adding up the molar masses of the components that make up each reaction. So for example, copper, atomic number 29, has a molar mass of 63.55 grams in a mole. For silver nitrate, I'm going to have to add up all of those components that make up the formula AgNO3. So I would add up 107.87, 14.01 for the nitrogen in the formula, and then 3 times 16 because of the O3 in the formula. And I'm going to jot down those values above the chemical reaction. Silver's molar mass it adds up to 169.88 grams per mole. I'll go ahead and list the molar masses of the two products as well. So those values will be helpful anytime I need to convert from grams to moles or back from moles to grams. So I'm gonna do a calculation below here and I'm gonna do this as a side calculation. 
I want to take 50 grams of copper and convert it to moles again because I want not a mass measurement of copper. I want to actually quantify it, how many copper atoms are present. And we use the mole unit to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the grams per mole amount in the molar mass. I'm using it in the sense that I would like to cancel grams. So the 63.55 grams will go in the bottom of the conversion factor, and that's equivalent to one mole of copper. I always like to include the quantity that I'm measuring in my conversion factors. So we can see that grams of copper would cancel. That comes out to equal 0 0.868 moles. And so I'm going to go ahead and write that on the before line underneath the gram amount. And I'll go ahead and erase my side work. In a similar way, I could go ahead and convert 50 grams of silver nitrate to moles. The conversion factor would be the same. What I would be doing mathematically is dividing 50 by 169.88. And that mole amount comes out to be 0 0.2943 moles. And again, before any of this happens, I have zero moles of product on the before line. So now I'm ready to consider the change line of the equation. This is where the action happens. This is where we lose reactant because it's being converted into products. So I do have to focus in and be careful that I focus on this ratio of reaction. It is an implied one here. One atom of copper is going to react with two units of silver nitrate. So one mole of copper would need to react with two moles of silver nitrate. If I look at my quantity of copper, 0 0.7868, I'm going to need double that of silver nitrate to react. And even without doing a calculation, I can see that I don't have double of uh, 0.7868 moles of copper. What that tells me is that the limiting reactant is going to be the silver nitrate because I need double, right? So looking at it in the other direction from the two to one ratio, I only need half as much copper compared to the silver nitrate to react. So I'm going to go ahead and do, again, a side calculation, but I need to figure out, well, if this does completely react, since it appears to be the limiting reactant, how much copper would react with it? I'm going to start with my mole amount of silver nitrate. And I'm going to formally solve this with a conversion factor. And what I want to do is get the ratio of moles of silver nitrate that reacts with moles of copper. I want moles of silver nitrate to cancel in my conversion factor. So I know I want that on the bottom of my conversion factor. I want moles of copper to be the unit that I end with. So I use the coefficient ratio as a mole ratio. There will be one mole of copper reacting for every two moles of silver nitrate that react. I can cancel my units, and essentially what I'm doing is dividing by 2, 0.2943 times 1 divided by 2. You may not have actually had to do that step. You could have just realized that you needed to divide it by 2, but I wanted to just formally show um, how we figure that out. So if I keep that with four significant digits, it's 0 0.1472 moles of copper that will react with 0 0.2943 moles of silver. So again, I'm going to go ahead and transfer that um, over to the change line. That's how much will react. That means that's how much or how many moles I'm going to lose or be converted into product, if you want to think about it that way. Let me erase my side work the silver nitrate will be entirely converted into product. It's my limiting reactant. So I'm going to lose all 
0.2943 moles of silver nitrate. Now I could go ahead and figure out what's left after, and I'll go ahead and draw my line. But the other thing is the change line. Again, the change line is where all the action happens. So the other thing that's happening while I lose this many moles of copper and this many moles of silver nitrate is I'm forming my product out of those rearranged atoms. So again, I do want to pay attention to the coefficients here. There was an implied one here. And so I need to ask myself, how much copper to nitrate would be formed if this ratio of moles reacts from the reactant side of the equation? The nice thing here is we can see that there's a one-to-one -one ratio of copper to copper to nitrate. And so what's going to be added over here is the exact same quantity in moles as is converted from copper. So I'm actually going to add point one. 472 moles of copper to nitrate. And that kind of makes sense because it's being formed from these copper atoms that end up dissolving into the solution to make this aqueous copper to nitrate. I can do a similar thing with my coefficients that have twos in them because it's the same ratio. And again, it kind of makes sense because I'm uh, taking two aqueous silver ions and converting them into solid silver atoms. So I'm going to add the same mole amount over here. Now, if it wasn't so simple, maybe this would be a different equation, and this would be 3, a coefficient of 3. We would need to pay attention to that. So I do want to show you what that calculation looks like if, if you needed to formally solve it. So I'll do a little bit of side work again. So let's say we know that 0.1472 moles. I can figure out any of the quantities on the product side of the equation, again, by using mole ratios. Let's just say I want to know how many moles of silver would be produced from that 0.1472 moles of copper that is reacting. Again, I'm going to use mole ratios, and I want moles of copper to cancel. I want moles of silver to be the unit that I end with. And so the mole ratio is going to be reflected in those coefficients, right? It's going to be a 1 to 2 ratio. One mole of copper reacted, two moles of silver produced. And if I went ahead and did that calculation, I'd have 0 0.2944 moles of silver. Now notice I've introduced a little bit of rounding error because I've done a calculation that involved rounding at each step. We've got four sig figs here. That's plenty to account for a little bit of rounding error. So again, that shows me how I could get from moles of copper reacted to moles of silver produced using a conversion factor, a little bit more of a formal calculation than just doing the visual check of the coefficients. Now, coming back to the BCA chart, we're almost done. We want to figure out what is left after this reaction happens. So that's my A line for after. And because I've got my mole amounts figured out, all I need to do is subtract on the reactant side of the equation and then add those new quantities that got produced on the um, product side of the reaction. So 0.7868 moles of copper, my starting amount, minus the amount that reacted ends up in moles 0 0.6396 moles of copper. My limiting reactant was the silver nitrate. It is completely used up in the reaction. It's gone. And then, of course, my products were produced from zero starting amount So at this point, we're in moles. If I wanted to actually do this in the lab, I can't put anything on a scale and directly measure moles. One of the questions we wanted to ask was, what is the limiting reactant? Well, we figured that out. It's the silver nitrate. The second question would have been, 
how much product was produced. In a sense, we've answered that. We've figured out how many moles of each product would be produced, but typically you wanna know that value in grams so that if you were to do this in a lab, you could actually check up on your results. So this is gonna require, again, a conversion using the molar mass amounts to get to grams. So I'll do a quick side calculation for, um, I'll go ahead and do the silver because that's the most obvious product because it ends up being solid. And then we could do a similar calculation for the other mole amounts. So 0 0.2943 moles of silver. I wanna use the molar mass as my conversion factor. This time I wanna cancel moles of silver and I'd like to end up in grams of silver. So again, from the periodic table, I looked up that it's 107.9 grams of silver in one mole. That value goes on top. My moles of silver would cancel, so really what I'm taking here is 0.2943 times 107.9 grams of silver. That comes out to equal 31.75 grams of silver. I'm going to go ahead and write that underneath here because it's the equivalent gram amount. In a similar way, I could go ahead and calculate the grams of copper to nitrate that I have here using the molar mass 187.57 grams per mole. Essentially what I'm doing is taking the mole amount and multiplying it by the gram amount. That comes out to equal 27.61 grams. So that answers the second question, how many grams of product were produced? The other question was how much excess reactant is left over? Remember, we had this solid copper reacting with the solution of silver nitrate. Not all of the copper reacted. So again, I could use the grams per mole amount to figure out how many grams that 0.6396 moles is equivalent to. I would be multiplying the mole amount times the molar mass to figure out the gram amount. And that value comes out to equal 40.65 grams of copper left. Of course, again, the silver nitrate completely reacted. So we have zero grams of silver nitrate left. It's kind of interesting to see that most of the copper is left we even though we reacted equal masses because the molar mass of silver nitrate is so much higher, um, most of the copper is left in all 50 grams of the silver nitrate has reacted. A final check that you can do, and this is the value of doing a BCA chart, is check for conservation of mass. My starting masses all together, I reacted two things of 50 grams each. So my starting total mass was 100 grams. That should always match what's left at the end of the reaction because mass is conserved. So if I take and I add 31.75 to 27.61 to 40.65, it should add up to 100. And a quick check might show you that that's true. It ends up that if I do take all of these and add them up as written, it's 100.5. 0, 1 grams. Now I didn't create mass in the reaction. That's just a tiny bit of error that's introduced by rounding at each step of the calculations. Essentially, I see I started with 100 grams, I end with 100 grams. Thanks for watching.